Snowball Spa. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Thursday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Thunder win again, Jared. feels like every time we walk in here, we talk about the Thunder winning another game. Last night, 129-120 over the Knicks. J-Dub this time with a career high. What was he, like 11 of 14, 5 of 5 from 3, uh, I didn't, 14 of 17? is cra- I, I, had I just saw up. the stat of uh, him and, and SGA combined for like 70. Yeah, 36 and 34. That's pretty impressive. Here, here is a question. Is there a chance the Thunder could get three All-Stars? I, I mean, yeah, at this pace, why not? SGA, the, the, Chet, and Dub. The, the whole argument is small market. You're not going to pull the votes. But deservingly, sure. Maybe. I would say this is the year SGA is a starter, right? I think so. 100% on that one. Yeah, and probably, probably a better chance of Chet than J-Dub just because of Chet's yeah, notoriety. It, 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 yeah. But – that's something we'll, this, we'll discuss later. I mean, later. man, that's a fun conversation to have, right? Here's another one. <laughs> while we're at it, while we're while we're loving Chet and J-Dub, where do they rank? Because you realize they were drafted the same night. That's right. In the same draft. Mm-hmm. Where does that go down? If you end up with two All-Stars out of the same draft, how many times does that happen? I've been trying to find it, and it's really hard to find because it, when you when you type in duos, it all it goes to like it doesn't go to the draft. It just you know goes to playing. Right. Is it even the best one in Thunder history? There's a caveat there, though. Yeah. There's a caveat. It is in Thunder history. Maybe not in Supersonic history. Ah. Well, they kept those records, right? So we talk about we'll talk about that. It's, you're right. It's a fun conversation to have because it's all awesome. it's all about positive things. Absolutely, and, yeah. Uh, college football. OSU took care of A and M. I think anybody with a functioning brain could see that coming with um, what OSU brought back and what A and M has lost, and kind of the chaos that's going down in College Station as they try to transition to Mike Elko and the way that the, the players they've lost off that roster. I actually thought A and M played pretty decent considering. Uh, all that they had lost, and, and the, what the first play, the quarterback breaks his arm in half, and he's off with the <laughs> air cast. But Oklahoma State wins as they should have <clears throat> by a score thirty one twenty three. Do we appreciate what Mike Gundy has done at Oklahoma State? If we don't, is it his fault? That we don't appreciate him as much as we should. I've got a bunch of stats about Mike Gundy's time that are that are incredible. And yet, doesn't it feel like he's won five and seven season from the OSU fans wanting him gone? I mean, I'm not so sure there wasn't called for him to be fired just this year. Oh after the yeah. two and two start. Yeah, oh there was. <clears throat> There was, but that's kind of the nature of the beast being the head coach of a, a football program. The moment the road gets rocky, co- fans are screaming for heads, right? Yeah, and but I, th- I know what you're saying. Here's the, the deal: him. I think he has created that monster for himself. Well, well yeah, I, at Oklahoma State, that that comes with success. Absolutely, it does. So yes. I, I wonder if I wonder if people realize what he has done. I'm going to try to to kind of paint that narrative. It's hard to appreciate a man with a perm, though. You got to appreciate him. <laughs> what was up with those eyes, dog? <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> I don't know. At first, when I first saw it, I thought, well, they took that picture right after Gunner scored. But by the way, how cool was that? That was pretty cool. It was unbelievable. I didn't realize he was in the game until he goes in the end zone. In the I end thought, zone. Wait a minute. When well, did he sneak in there? Well, that's what it took off, and it was like, <laughs> the hell happened to Bowman? Yeah. Hell, why is he running so fast? Oh, it's Gunner. <laughs> Touchdown. 
The Mike Gundy thing is interesting. Um, is Scott right? I hate to say this. Is Scotty G right? Oh, I thought you were talking about the beat writer. No, 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 Scott no, no, no. Right. No, is Scotty G? <laughs> yeah, I should have put that in there. Is Scotty G right about Caleb Williams? Um, I I vaguely remember what he what his opinion bust was. as being a bust, maybe a system quarterback, just a bust. Whew. I think if he was just a system quarterback, he'd have look, looked a lot more like Miller Moss did last night. That's a great point too. Yeah. Man, that dude. It wasn't like they went up against uh, an A and M. No offense, OSU, but they went up. Uh, Louisville had some motivation there. Should have. Man, he looked good. Does it scare off Will Howard? Has he? Have, he hasn't officially announced he's going there, has nah, he? No, there's been a lot of rumors. Lincoln actually mentioned that last night. Of, I wonder if you know, he didn't name him the starting quarterback for next year, but he did mention like you know you see that. Do people want to come compete against him? Did he recruit this kid, or was he there when he got there? He was there. Uh huh. He was there, but he was a big time. Re- I mean, well, sure. Recruit. I mean, he looked pretty good. What's a good night tonight for Jackson Arnold? Ponder that in his first start for Oklahoma. High school hoops tournament of champions got underway yesterday at the BOK Center in Tulsa. Got the first round results for girls and boys. What's going on today there? Also, the Merritt Oilerettes on the road. You said you passed them. We I did. Confirma- confirmation that they're headed east for an 8 o'clock tip at the Bertha Frank Teague Classic, Mid-America Classic. Let's get the whole name right. In Ada. At the it's Kerr, a long name for it. Kerr Activities yeah. Center. A Kerr Dome. I'm just going to tell you right now, if anybody on the Merritt bus is listening, it's what, about a three-hour drive to yeah, Ada? Yeah. On a bus, I'm sure you just blaze it down I-40 to exit 200. You can go north to Prague. You can go south to Ada. I'm hitting, I'm pulling off the interstate south to Ada and immediately making an easterly jog into the parking lot. And the timing will be about right. They left at 8. Beat the lunch rush. Beat the lunch rush. Stop at the catfish roundup. The catfish roundup. Oh. It's right there at the exit. Anybody going? Today's just, show brought to you by the catfish you're roundup. You're welcome. I'm just telling you, you're welcome. <laughs> it's no Simon's catch, but it's close. It's a good spot See, to that's stop. That's the problem, though. They're, they're, if this is merit we're talking about, they're, it's right they're going to immediately compare it to Simon's right. catch and go, eh. Ah. Nah. I mean, it's no Simon's cat. It's good, but it it's has no an, Simon's cat. It catch. used to have an albino catfish swimming in the tank as you walked in. Did it have a name? I don't. Probably. Like Chuck or something. I don't know. Anyhow, it's just eating what? tips. I think the place we ate when we went to Ada a couple years ago is no longer there. I know. I was looking we for were, in we case were. we were going to go to Ada. I was looking at at uh, eating places yeah. and looking for trying to remember what that was called, and I don't think it's there anymore. Tried to support a local joint. Fortunately, it's gone away. Yeah, Catfish Roundup. And they'll have plenty of time because they play at 8 o'clock tonight. That's right. So they'll have plenty of time. 8 o'clock tonight, Paragon TV, Oilerettes, and the Bing Lady Pirates. So, we'll hit some high school hoops. We'll talk college football, maybe some thunder at the end of the show. 225-9698. Oh, here you go, Dylan. And an ant that worked there. Small world. Absolutely. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things. If you've got uh, restaurant recommendations for our friends from Merritt, <laughs> send them in <laughs> in Ada or anywhere along the way. 225-9698. Tell us where your aunt worked. Yeah. Whatever. You know, if we if we hit a nerve, it'll work just fine. <laughs> If you're going to be outside of the listening area, say if you're on the Merritt bus, for instance, you can log on kadsam.com, or you can download the app. It's free to download. It's got all the radio stations. The Penny News, a brand new edition of the Penny News is out right now. Go pick up a free copy of the Penny News. Big Elk and Paragon TV, as I mentioned, Paragon TV, back on the air the next three days with Merritt. You know what else is on today? What's on? I just got wind of this. Uh... Last night, 
over at Hammond, they're having what's called a super scrimmage. Oh. And it looks like our guys are going to put it on huh. Paragon. Okay, there you I've go. I've got to find out who's over there. There's some na- some good teams over there. So you got that as well? I don't know how they're going to do it. They're doing it in both gyms. You know, I, just, I, I can tell you what you do. You make people mad. <laughs> you can only be in one place at one time. And yeah, hope you choose wisely. Yeah. Let's see here. I just put it in the Warrior Dome and move on. Why is it not? Okay. No, nah, they're they're going to just stick with like two scrimmages. Okay. Dover. Uh, at three. N- number one Dover. Lady Warriors are scrimmaging Dover at three, followed by Turner at 515. They're ranked 16th, by the way. There Pretty you go. good little scrimmage right there. That's very cool. Almost, so you can yeah. take that in as well. And, of course, Skinny on, Sport Pod, on Sports Podcast. If you miss one of our shows entirely, you can check us out. Everywhere where podcasts drop, we're there as well. How are you today, Jared? Good. Only Good. one more show in 2023. I know. I actually stayed up and watched all that football, and I feel fine. I guess I was preparing for tonight, too. Yeah, tonight. Back-to-back 8 o'clock. 8.15, I guess, for OU, but still back-to-back late-night kickoffs. Here in the Sooner State. All right, the basketball yesterday, high school hoops. Tournament of Champions got underway in Tulsa. And, man, I, I think the one maybe notable surprise slash, or at least for folks out here, I know I even heard Mark talking about the Tournament of Champions, Champions yesterday, and he thought that uh, he had the final being Owasso and Weatherford. One of those teams could be there, uh, but not the Eagles, as uh, Crossings Christian gets revenge from last season's semifinal defeat at the hands of the Weatherford Eagles, as uh, Crossings beats Weatherford 57-42. They got off to a hot start. Weatherford got back what, within three, you said, in the in the second half. Yeah. I was kind of in and out of it uh, watching and that they got within – three and then crossings just kind of held them at bay from there and and uh weatherford falls 57 to 42 the first game of the day was almost a gigantic upset at least if you look at enrollments of schools is it was edmund north hanging on to beat okay okay of course powered by the diesel they're okay diesel davis yeah they're rank one right yeah they're one caddo's two Caddo plays uh, Carl Albert in the uh, holiday, the Mustang, uh, Mustang. tournament today. Right, okay. But uh, Edmund North wins 58 53. Crossings beat Weatherford 57 42. Dale, I mean, it, tonight's game is is a pretty anticipated one. Dale and Owasso. So Dale obviously has uh, Dayton Forsyth going to Oklahoma. We, we've seen what he did in that national tournament back over Thanksgiving time. You know who Owasso has? Who? You remember the name Brian Montanati? No. From OSU Cowboy Lore back in the day? Maybe. Yeah. His son. Oh, okay. His son, I think, is a sophomore or junior at Owasso. Uh, he's like a top 30 player in his class nationally. So, what? Assuming he's going to go to Stillwater? Eh. It's probably the plan, but I don't know if that it's set in stone. So now we know who to root for if you're oh, you're an OSU <coughs> yeah, fan. There you go. It's it's not only it's Bedlam and it's Owasso versus Dale. So that'd be a pretty interesting one uh, tonight at uh, the Tournament of Champions. Weatherford OK at ten thirty today. So they're the second game of the day. Oh, darn. Ten thirty Weatherford versus OK in the consolation bracket of that Tournament of Champions. I the crossings obviously uh, bumped up to five A. So they're not really ranked. They're undefeated. I just I was a little bit saddened because I wanted to see Weatherford play Edmund North or play Dale or play a lot, you know, mm-hmm. see those matchups. And now when you look, you're like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> then either Tulsa Hale or Metro Christian is like, oh man, those don't get they, they don't you get you excited. fired up. Yeah, yeah. that's maybe an Edmund North, but but that's just the way it went. So the Eagles now, I think, have a really nice, a pretty good chance to win that consolation bracket. Did you see, while well, we're talking about 4A boys basketball, did you see the transfer that Douglas got? Who was it? He he is committed, the name escapes me, but he was committed to OU, he is committed to OU for football. And he's also highly ranked in basketball, 
and he's going to Douglas to play basketball. That might change the whole landscape of things for 4A boys basketball. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. You're gonna have to. Nickens, is that it? Oh, Jaden Nickens. Yes, thank from you. Millwood. Thank you, Jeremy, from the text line. Yes, yeah, I saw that uh, tweeted out over there. Holy Moses! Yeah. So yeah, here it is. He'll be suiting up for the Trojans. Oh, you can Douglas. miss. Oh yeah, that's the kid who hit the three at the buzzer. He said, "Give it to me. I'll hit it," and he did it. Is that not him? No, not him. That was a different kid. But he's the one that uh he's the one that returned the kickoff oh, yeah, in the yeah, semifinals yeah. for a touchdown. Yeah, he is now a Douglas Trojan. Very. Apparently from the Twitter sphere. Oh, I'm looking at a story in the Oklahoma. Oh, it's in there. So <laughs> yeah. it's official. Then yeah. it's official. Yeah, Oklahoma. So what does that do with Douglas basketball? You know, they're defending champs. Are they suddenly – it's going to be real interesting to see when the next rankings come out what happens there, if that changes opinions. I'm shocked. Crazy. Like, huh? holy cow, what? He's a heck of an athlete. But imagine this. I mean, he played – he went and, and won a title at Millwood in football. Did they not win? No. Washington. Was that the semifinal game that they brought that? My apologies. Yeah. I always forget they're a week behind. <clears throat> yeah, Washington won again. Well, still, still played, played for it. one yeah. and then and now going to Douglas. and We know what they can do in basketball. And it doesn't matter. He's from the Texan on Douglas. Ter- yeah, they're terrible at football. Well, he didn't play football. <laughs> we waited until the end of football season and then transferred. That's wild. I did not. When did when is the story written? It's right before Christmas. Yeah, that's why I missed it. It was that Saturday of Christmas when the story was posted. Yeah, or last Saturday. Wow. Yeah, that uh, so that changes a lot. I mean, that makes everybody go, "Huh? What about Douglas to repeat now?" That they got well, some, uh, they were obviously a, listen. They, they well, were they were a contender, and no they were a, I don't know if a favorite because of what everybody Weatherford brought back. They brought back a bunch too, but they did bring back a bunch too, and that's that's gonna be interesting. Let's start the playoffs already, <laughs> man. <laughs> Let's get there. We got another couple months, but to, until the state, very interesting. I was just reading this this story. Did it give a reason why? Did it interview him? Did he say why he made the switch? I don't see it. I mean, his future's set. I mean, he's committed to OU. That doesn't change anything. He had to play football. To play football. But they also believe it said um, he is considered a a pretty good recruit in basketball, too. Ranked in the state anyways. Yeah. I wonder here here's what I wonder. This is crazy. Cuz he can't just it's If he's a mid-season enrollee, mid-year enrollee next year, is this the last time he's going to play basketball? Or is he good enough? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Man, this that baffles my mind. Is it just going to go to Millwood and play football again next year? I mean, because those schools are very close. Yeah, it's, it's not, not like, like he's, he's moving across town. No. Huh. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions about this one. I can't <laughs> wait to see what happens. Like how You don't think it'd go the other way. For football purposes, because that's what he's going to school for but he got that he got that offer he's made that commitment to OU exactly that's what I mean so they're just like kids now he's if you just think is he chasing a basketball title I mean he could very well do that at Millwood but maybe he just has friends he wants to play with maybe so I don't know this is crazy maybe the high school NIL is a thing well it's, it's not like he's a senior no 
That's the whole thing. He's just a junior. So if he was a senior, I'd get it. Okay, yeah, he's played football now. He's going to Douglas. But he's still got to play football next fall. Yeah, okay, Stephen Alexander is his AAU coach. Who is the head coach at Douglas? I get the basketball part. The basketball part of it is simple to me. Mm-hmm. It's the next fall that doesn't make any sense. On the surface. Yeah, I totally get why he'd do that. Why would he? He's he's but, a but he football has recruit. Year to play, so yeah. What, yeah. Why would he leave a state title contending program at Millwood to go play for a terrible maybe football thought, program right now in Douglas? I've, or maybe he's going to go back. That's what, there's always that, but maybe I'm kind of leaning on it, thinking I've I've got my future set. I've committed to OU. Nothing's going to go against that if I go to a team that plays worse football. Here's what's so, going to tell you what it, he's going to go back. This is going to be the amazing test case for this new rule. Just going to go because here's the thing: he'll have he can he'll get that starting July first when that new rule comes into effect. Like he he's doing this before the rule. So okay, so he's. He's transferred over, and then when the new rule, he'll have a free transfer, so he can I think go that's back. Right. I think that's right. So he, Got you. He's doing it before, so he's transferring before he gets his free transfer. See, this is ingenious. <laughs> and then, I would guess, he's not going to play basketball next year. He's going to enroll mid-year to Norman. To Norman. Mm-hmm. For football. Graduate early and yeah. go practice in the bowl <laughs> practices. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing. If that's really what happens. If that's really what happens, this is unbelievably amazing. I'm glad you saw that. I had no idea. Well, but back to my point, though, it changes a lot of – I can't wait to see what how this shakes up for a boys basketball, you know, with Weatherford losing yesterday and – what happens? You know, I always thought Weatherford was the number one team, even before the season started and those rankings came out, and there they were. I think a lot of opinions will change now. Oh, Douglas got better. You'd certainly think so. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we'll see. North Rock Creek. They're number two right now. Ah, I'll get to see them. They'll be at Washington. Third week of January, like us. Yeah, this Jeremy's. I mean, yeah, Millwood's won back to back basketball state championships. Yeah, he's done enough. Yeah, but one to go play with this coach. Yeah, and then come back to Mill. This is wild. I can't wait. I cannot wait for like hurry up. It's fast forward to August. I want to see where he's at. <laughs> All right, tonight I know where everybody be at. In front of their TVs watching Paragon TV, the Merritt Oilerettes down at the Bertha Frank Teague Classic in Ada. 8 o'clock against the Bing Lady Pirates. Uh, the field is loaded, as always, for this tournament. It's one of those the most prestigious basketball tournaments in the state of Oklahoma, obviously, with uh, the, the accomplishments of one Bertha Frank Teague in her coaching career. If you don't know her history, look it up. We don't have enough time to talk about it, but it's pretty pretty amazing. And I think that's a big reason why you know people want the teams and coaches, they, they want to go. To kind of celebrate that, right? I mean, it's it's a big deal to a lot of people to be able to be invited to this tournament specifically. Mm-hmm. And a tournament of champions is what it is because that means, you know, something really good happened the year before. But as far as the prestige, I think a lot of people would just as soon win this one as anything. And that's why you get loaded fields. And, and it's always cool to me when you get fields that – Kind of celebrate all different sizes of schools, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's always the neat thing because you you don't get this match. It's very a, it's often. that Hoosiers mentality to see, you know, Class A versus Class Four A or what have you, or even bigger, and and that's what you get in the in in some of these tournaments. In the birth of Frank Teague is certainly that merit going against a Four A team tonight and being a win, and all of a sudden you're either playing Carl Albert. 
who, as we've said for what, you know, five A and six A haven't ranked anybody yet, but they're a fantastic team year after year after year. Or Bethel, a top, I think they're number seven in three A. Then on the other side, we got number one in three A with Washington, Kingfisher, McAllister. It's it's just a cool mix of teams, and and the, and the neat thing about it is, if, if you're Merritt, you don't just get invited because you know somebody. You get invited because you've had success, and that's certainly what the Oilerettes have done over the last handful of years. Hundred percent. And that's um, I was telling Gabe yesterday. He was asking, "How do a team get invited to this?" And there are teams like uh, at the Tournament of Champions that they, they invite teams that uh, traditionally have either won a state title or went to state the, the previous year or were runner up. When you look it up and down that bracket, there's a lot of gold and silver. And this one, it's their anticipation. Because you look at this tournament, you, if you do good in this tournament, it's it's, it's it bodes very well on, on the rest of your season. I've seen two teams go down there and make the state tournament. One of them win state, the other one come up with silver. Uh, so that's the anticipation. So, yeah, so getting invited to this tournament, they're telling you, Merritt, that they expect, hey, last year was great. But this year could be even better for this Merritt Oiler, Oilerette team. Uh, and so if you can go down there and go 2-1, and one, you know, in any route, you've done pretty dang good for yourself. You go down there and almost, in some cases, depending on what the seeding is like, and I'm not suggesting this is going to happen to Merritt, but if you just get one win, that's pretty good because you had to beat a team that also has great aspirations for their seasons going forward. So it's a very fun. It's very fun. Every matchup's going to be really, really good, no matter what route it goes. No matter how, how if, if you're playing on a Saturday afternoon or Saturday night, it's going to be a good game. I, I can't wait for this tournament. I, it's always entertaining every year. Yeah, think about the teams from a year ago. In, in one side of this bracket, you had Caddo. If I remember right, won last year's Birth of Frank Teague Classic. They played in the finals. Yeah. And unfortunately for them, that meant they got to play ceiling. Tuttle. I was a 4A semifinalist and lost to the eventual champion in uh, in Bethany. Pittsburgh. They were the defending Class B state champions. They lost in the semifinals last year. They were there. Yeah. And then Carl Albert, which that kind of goes off of our radar, right? They were twenty. I can tell you, they were twenty-two and six a year ago, and they lost in the semifinals of five A. That was just half the bracket. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> then uh, Georgetown, Texas, which I don't really remember any times, because you were there twice, right, with Hammond in twenty eighteen en route to a state title, and the Canute in twenty twenty, who was beaten by Hydro in the finals, right. Do you remember not there a, being not a team from out of state? Yeah, so I'm trying to think of the field. There's like Kingston was there. Um, one of, the, one of the Christian academies was there. Yeah, like Christian Heritage or something like yeah. that. Yeah, <clears throat> in-state teams. Okay, so Carl Albert was a semifinalist. Caddo was the runner-up. Tuttle was a semifinalist. Pittsburgh was a semifinalist. Bethel. This is last year's field. Just to give Merritt fans an idea of you know what happened. Bethel, class three A semifinalist. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna guess they were four A. Then you have Ada, which that's the you know they're close. They were an area tournament team. Whatever Georgetown, Texas did in Texas. I mean that's that's an incredible field, right? Absolutely. So this is good stuff. Good stuff coming for the Merritt Oilerettes. I can't wait to see how they perform. You know, this is a team that <clears throat> state tournament two years ago. Everything kind of fell apart in the area tournament last year when it looked like they were definitely en route to another state tournament appearance, right? It just didn't happen. Everything just kind of went the wrong way at the wrong time of that season. But I think this is... Uh, it's a pretty cool showcase for the Oilerettes. Yeah, that's 
t- tonight should be fun. It's um, virtually a home game for Bing. And um, if they can get past them, and, and then you never know what could happen. And and hopefully, I think they will. I think they can get a win tonight and then uh, match up with, help me. Carl Albert. Carl Albert. Bethel. Yeah. You want those matchups. Mm-hmm. You want the you want to be in this tournament. You want those those non traditional matchups and, and test uh, test yourself and again, no shame in taking a loss at any point in this tournament. But um it, it, this will make you better. This will make them better. Well and I think for practical and purposes down the road, what else it does is it gets the Oilerettes seen by a lot more people, and by that I mean two A coaches. Correct. <clears throat> and you have a good showing in this. You know, like you say, go two and one in this tournament, beating the teams that you're going to get to have a chance to beat. That can only help. You know, last year it seemed like forever, but they just won so many games in a row that they couldn't be ignored, right? And they end up what two or three by the time the the, the playoffs were set. The year yeah. before that, though, they, they never could kind of bust through that into the top eight or right at number eight this year i think with this tournament and the opportunity in front of them this can really help them probably i mean dale is you know the defending champ what have you and that's going to be you know every year they're good but this gives you a chance to even you know not only top eight but even up into the top eight that might be a little helpful once the playoff brackets are drawn up yeah it's really cool really really cool well, college football talk now. Reliving last night's uh, Oklahoma State win, thirty-one twenty-three in the Texas Bowl over the Texas A&M Aggies. What a workmanlike performance! I mean, they were never really in danger of losing that game. Ollie Gordon, a good capper to a fantastic sophomore year, one hundred eighteen yards, a touchdown. He ends up with seventeen fifty ish a little maybe just a tick I think he was 16 14 so 17 32 scored 21 touchdowns he talked after the game about you know he was never really leaving, never considering leaving he was always going to be because he's comfortable and he likes where he's at and, and Oklahoma State's going to have a pretty darn good team coming back next year as well in the first year of the new big 12 but it got you know this morning I'm, I'm driving in and what's the talk surrounding that game last night? It's Mike Gundy's eyes, <laughs> and that picture, and how red, and was he high or what? You know what? Who, but it, it it's just like I get it. It wasn't one of the major bowls. It wasn't a playoff game or what have you. But it just got my, it, it made my mind shift to what is the feeling for Oklahoma State fans. Moving forward with Mike Gundy, and ha- is he appreciated to the level that his accomplishments deserve? So think about this. Currently, and I don't know if last night's game is counted into this, but it's not enough to make a giant difference. Oklahoma State wins in college football and their history. of the time in total. The history of... And the history of OSU football. OSU football. They win 52.6% of their games. You want to take a guess, if if you take Gundy's career out, career totals out of that, you want to venture a guess at what that winning percentage is? Uh, Below 50. 48.9. 473 wins, 493 losses. So quite literally, Mike Gundy has made Oklahoma State a winning college football program. He's 165 and 79. Like I said, I don't know if last night's counted in there. Maybe 166 and 79. That's 67.6%. So he has won at such a clip that he has been able, since he's taken that job 19 years ago, elevated Oklahoma State from a a losing program to a winning program. Let's keep going. His first season in 2005, they went 4-7. and Since then, he has reeled off 18 straight winning seasons. 
You got any idea what the longest winning season streak was before Mike Gundy? At OSU? At OSU. Less than 10. Like five. Six. 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 In the 80s. Which, oh, by the way, you had about three of those he was the quarterback for. Yeah. And he had a pretty good running back. Too. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you know, so you think about Mike Gundy's. Like the the positive force that he's been on OSU football is obviously not no one can compare to it. Last night was his eighth ten win season. Eight. So eight out of nineteen. He has won ten games. His teams have won ten games. You know how many they've you know how many other ten game winning seasons there have been? All time. Fifteen still feels way too high, doesn't it? Fifteen all time. In yeah, the, in the over not, hundred of years, not of counting football? Gundy, not counting Gundy, not counting Gundy's eight all time. Uh, let's go. With, I don't know. Ten, three. Wow, three. So he's reeled off eighteen straight winning seasons, which is triple the longest streak outside of him. And he played in about three of those years, you know. So, yeah. and then he has won more than double ten game seasons than anybody ever. You combine them all. It's fascinating to me how successful that he has been, and yet it feels like maybe not the majority of the OSU fan base, but there's certainly a faction of it. It is almost can't wait to get rid of him. Like, yeah, not the majority, but the, there's the loudest. I mean, and that's how it works, right? It's not the majority that are the loudest, but yeah, you hear the the loudest fan base, the minority of them. The they're yelling because they think getting rid getting rid of him will get them over that hump to the big game, to the national title game, to the playoffs. And to that, I say, be careful what you wish for. It's it's a really no, it, it's a really interesting conversation, right? Because has he built Oklahoma State to a totally different level than they've ever been? Which then in turn means they can hire somebody above the level they ever could have and then maybe maybe they're right. Did he make the job Did, so attractive that they can get somebody quote unquote better than Gundy? Is that what you're saying? Or he's got this thing built on such a firm, higher foundation than it's ever been that it's easier to reach a little bit higher mm -hmm. from where somebody's going to start, whoever follows Mike Gunn. Right. Or, or <clears throat> have these stats that I've just laid out show more of he's the only one that can do this. Yeah. That's why I say be careful what you wish for because if, if you run him out of town or you force him to retire or whatever the case may be and you get someone to come and go, okay, this is a great job. This has been elevated. This is a good place. You can win here even with three-star guys and da-da-da, and then they start running off five-win, four-win, six-win seasons. Well, that's less than the standard that what Gundy had established. It's 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 interesting. Yeah, and, and here's the deal. When you look at those 18... I almost want to see him not coach to see what that answer is. Not because <laughs> I don't want Gundy to coach. You, you know what I mean? Just like, okay, just to, just from a outsider's point of view, like, okay, what happens now? What happens now? He's not there. What's going to happen to this program? Well, here here's the wild thing. In those 18 years, it's not like he's going 7-6 and six every year. There's like three or four of those. Mm, yeah. The rest are 8, 9, 10, 11... Way above winning. Obviously, 67.6%. And that's what the 4-7 and seven stuck in there in this first year when he was basically cleaning house. Getting his guys, getting his vision in there, yeah. Okay, two things on the text line. One, how much credit does Les Miles get in this to kind of start it? Yeah. He had it going for... Than the time he was here, and it did elevate him enough 
to get lured away by LSU. They got other people's attention. But that's the thing, though. I mean, that's that's the difference between someone like Gundy, who's the homegrown kid who's who played there. He's not leaving. He's not taking a better job, quote unquote, better job, whatever, whatever you call it. And that's the that's the risk of if uh, in, on the text line. That's it. it that's said, the next if one. You get the, if you get someone else, an outsider per se does a good job continues it what they're doing then let's say usc calls <laughs> you know or lsu <clears throat> it's they're, it's a fascinating discussion yeah. and that's going to be the thing when gundy and i agree on the text line that he will retire there i agree with that they're not going to fire him but when he retires how do they go about making that next hire internally do they find someone who the same route like okay we got to find a guy who played here who's you know so watch i guess really watch like zach robinson <laughs> yeah but really watch you know what if one day it just an, it's announced let's just use him as an example it's announced in the offseason zach robinson hired as a quarterback coach for osu gundy hired zach robinson keep note of that because that might be a thing where like all right he might be grooming him to become his successor yeah looking back <clears throat> And I don't know the OSU coaching staff. I don't know who's on. I'm sure there's a lot of alums. But I can tell you right now, nobody in the world wants Casey Dunn to be the, the head coach. <laughs> they barely want him to be the coordinator, and I'm not sure if that's true. But like looking back, your your point is well taken because at the time, no one really thought like this. But in hindsight, it was almost obvious that Bob knew what he was doing. None of us realized it. Getting. Going away from Heupel, unfortunately, I don't think he ever wanted to do that. I really think in Bob's heart of hearts, he thought he was grooming Josh Heupel to be the next head coach at Oklahoma. It just didn't work out. And so then when it didn't work out, okay, who's next? And then that's where Lincoln Riley comes about. I can remember even way back, Heupel on the national title run, I remember thinking – or saying it, so that that dude's going to be a coach. That dude, coach on the field. I mean, you always yeah, heard that. You he always yeah. heard that because he would he would do that. His dad was a coach, and, yeah, and all that. I was in. So yeah, it's it's so interesting because you know that route hasn't won the big one. Go outside the program. I, I honestly, I, I'm dead serious about this. I've always kind of been a go outside guy because I just think it is so hard to follow in the footsteps of legendary coaches. If you go back through the history, it's so uh, well, hard yeah. to 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 be what you want to be is the guy after the guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, of course. You yes. want to be the guy that follows the guy that follows the guy. But I also think that Oklahoma State is one of those unique places that it kind of takes, I guess, well, Miles wasn't. But, I mean, when you look at Gundy's success and his history and how much more successful Mike Gundy's tenure has been than Oklahoma State's football history, it bodes toward the needing a homegrown type guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> the problem is anybody would want to coach their alma mater. You know, anybody – Latrell even made comments to that saying, I just, I've always wanted to come back here and be here in, in, in some form or fashion, be a coach. The problem is, and it's worked out for Gundy, obviously. Oh, I yeah. think out of all this, what we're saying is he is the reason OSU is relevant and good. He is 100% the big reason. But getting a guy, like if you want to get a homegrown guy because you think, okay, we, we won't lose him to an LSU or a USC or some other blue blood for a quote-unquote higher, bigger program. But, man, I would be, for the university I went to and loved, I would be a little apprehensive going back because, man, wouldn't it suck to get fired by that university that you love? Uh, I think what if it doesn't work out? And then, the, I mean, man, that's, that's I I'm sure it broke Bob's heart to tell Josh you got to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were kind of talking about this last night. Jeff Brom in, in Louisville came back to Louisville, and they were talking about, well, there's a little pressure here. He has to win here. He doesn't want to have to get fired by this. By this, And he's winning. 
He's, but he's, he's already been there once. Yeah. He's already won there. Yeah. Then he left, and then he came back to win again. You know, that I think there are certain places where it makes more sense than others, or it's more of a necessity than others. Mm-hmm. And this is not a, a shot, a knock, or anything, but it's amazing to me how outside of Mike Gundy, there is this love. I mean, you know, there's a difference in the way. The, at least the people that I know, there's a difference in the way that Oklahoma State alums view Oklahoma State versus any other college that I know that anybody else went to. Like there, there's there, there's a love for that school that's even deeper than for some football team. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I, I mean, I'm dead serious about that. There's... Oklahoma State, the school, is where the love goes to, and it just so happens that there are sports teams there. But it's more about the college itself and the time that that everyone that went there spent. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, that yeah. is the the draw. It's not football. It's not basketball. It's not softball. It's not. It, it's the school itself, and that's where I think having a a, a guy that understands that. And the culture that that then builds makes it, it doesn't have to be, but man, it, if when it, it, it sure seems like it's, it's helped him. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, it just, mm-hmm. it does. I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by that. I mean, he's only what, 56, 57, 58, something like that. So I mean, this we could have this conversation for another decade. But who's going to be next? You know what I mean? That's it that doesn't sh- really show any signs of of slowing down. No, no. You know, I mean, we always try to look for clues. You know what's next, and and ultimately, it's going to be Gundy's decision on when he calls it quits, you know, and it's always going to be shocking. Like when, when Stoops retired, it was shocking. No one saw it coming, but I wonder if I'm not suggesting he's going to announce retirement in the off season. I'm not, Good God, no. I'm not suggesting that what I'm saying is, and I'm sure he told his son, get in the portal. You're, you're getting the portal. Now, was that because he said, because you're, I'm going to retire before your college career is up. No, it's you're not going to play well, I here. Don't, I don't want to uh, have to bench you every time. Yeah, you're not going to play yeah. here. Move on. Enjoy your time. You got a couple snaps. It's best for both of us. You can go play somewhere, and here is not it. I don't. I don't think that's anything. It, it would be shocking to me with everything that's going on, and in a lot of positives, I think for OSU football in that. You look around in the new Big 12, there isn't anyone that sticks out head and shoulders above them. If you if you take the Mike Gundy era for the last 19 years, are there teams that are, that are maybe on par? Sure. Utah, Screams, Utah. And how sim- it's, it's amazing how similar they really kind of are mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But for me, I, I think he's... You've got a guy that has to, has got obviously the program's on solid footing. A really good team coming back next year in a new Big Twelve that he's got to be one of the top two, three programs in. And I, you know what? I think in a lot of ways, he wants to experience Oklahoma State football without having to always worry about. Oklahoma. Mm. That, that's that's not even a thought now. Who cares? Yeah, what they're doing has zero impact on what we're doing. As far as in season results and that kind of, it doesn't matter. We're completely separate of them. And I, I think that I think that's got to be intriguing. To now be able to start. I would say he reels off two or three Big 12 titles in the next five years, which is going to lead to playoff appearances for the first time in school history. I wonder if, just in his own mind, if there is that, okay, watch this. 
now I can start being appreciated the way I ought to be appreciated because that's out of my way. And now Oklahoma State can be more on the national stage by itself, you know, Mm -hmm. without Oklahoma and Texas being either in the way or, you know, being talked about too. Where I think that's got to be intriguing to him for the next handful of years at least, just to see. Because I, I, there's every opportunity in my mind for Oklahoma State to kind of take this new Big 12 and, and lead it and that, on the football and field. And that overall for the Big 12 is going to be fun to watch next year because there are a lot of teams in that same boat. Sure there are. You know, like Kansas State, Iowa State, Utah, Arizona. I mean, there's a lot that are going to come into this – conference next year think now nah, we're the favorites we're the favorites we're the favorites because there's no well there's no OU in Texas there to fill one of those spots that considered the favorite or top two so that that's going to be fun to watch on the field because they're going to go in with a lot of confidence which usually you know that breeds a really good football on both sides you're going to have some I think we'll have some fun games in the big 12 oh I do too because a lot of teams think we're we're next up we're it they're gone now. It's our turn. It's our turn to shine, and then other teams go. No, actually, it's us. We're coming into this conference. We're Utah. We beat USC every year. We're we're going to come in here and dominate this conference. Man, I, I, there's like six or seven teams that right now, if you think about, okay, how who would I pick to win the Big Twelve? Yeah, there's like six or seven or eight where you could make a pretty decent and case. Kansas. For I forgot to mention Kansas. TCU. They played for the title last year. <laughs> crazy it is nuts. We're wrapping up thursday college stay with the college football what's a good night for jackson arnold tonight well win or lose what's a good night uh, i'm talking about just him just him just consistent i guess just don't you know what the bed I mean, we've seen you know flashes of really good football from him he throws a good ball just make good decisions protect the football and and see what happens i mean this is gonna be his first game there's gonna be jitters he's but i i just want to see him i guess i would say just make just protect a football make make good decisions uh let's say anywhere in the realm of let's go 175 and two touchdowns and you know and he's gonna get some on the ground too he can run it so something like that how about you Oh, if he throws for 175 yards, people are going to be screaming from the mountaintops for Dylan Caper. Yeah, well. <laughs> Look better than he did against BYU. How about that? When he was thrust in there in that first, second Put half. Put in there. Yeah. <clears throat> played the second half and, quite frankly, struggled. Missing some easy throws that, <clears throat> first off, you have to make if you're going to be any good, but – you'd be expected to make even coming off the bench the way he was there yeah. were just some of those and I, you know i'll give him i mean i'll defend him here i you know the, the weather was horrible the ground was horrible, whatever but and then thrust in there you know he didn't think he stepped off the bus thinking well, i get to hold a clipboard the rest of the day and but you always got to be ready you never know when that your time your your number's called so like, i agree with that too you got to be better than that but maybe now with a full almost full month to prepare for this told you know Thankfully, Gabriel didn't pull what Milton did at t- Tennessee and last minute go into the portal and they're scrambling. He, he went did, to the draft. Draft, excuse me. And uh, but my, Maybe the first undrafted free agent quarterback <laughs> in the history of college football yeah. to not play in the bowl game. Yeah. We've got, we've got undrafted dudes opting out now. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Somebody told him. Somebody gave him a bad grade or a, lied to him about his grade. But – Point is, he's had a full month to prepare for this, knowing he's the guy. He he is the guy, and they've and, and almost a full month with Latrell and the new offense or new ish offense. So we'll see, we'll see. It's funny because Arizona by Vegas stand Vegas saying they're they're favored right now. It's like a point and a half. It's almost just a pick them, but then you do that percentage do you see that mm-hmm. on espn that's like oh you 75 percent chance yeah to win. it's why, before people well, opted out why is that oh, it was before yeah, it's for the portal why but don't i mean they adjust that? what were we seeing the other day oh it's a&m last night's game yeah yeah they a&m, were, was, a&m was like 73 percent by the uh, but it, it, they ran it when the when it was announced <clears throat> you know what i'm saying instead of yeah. game time well latrell call plays tonight absolutely right i mean who else would do it 
not Finley. Yeah, I mean, I think it absolutely he will. No, he he called the plays at North Texas, right? Wasn't he totally in charge of that? Well, I mean, he's the, he's going to call the plays. Yeah. The, yeah, I think how that dynamic works is they <clears throat> game plan during the week, and he has the call during the game. Oh, Dakota. What if he has a performance similar to Trevor Knight in the Sugar Bowl against Alabama? <laughs> oh, my God. can you imagine the hype train? Oh, it would be similar. Whatever you do, keep Katy Perry out of Norman when Tennessee rolls in. Don't do it. Yeah. Poor Trevor Knight, derailed by Katy Perry from Oxford, Mississippi. What a sad day that was. Uh-huh. Probably a happy – you know, listen – we're seeing it in the NFL with the Dakota's Chiefs. Taylor Rono yep. is ruining the Kansas City Chiefs season, <laughs> just like Katy Perry ruined the 2014 Sooners season. You know who ought to be really be mad at Katy Perry? Who's that? Josh Heupel. Or he probably would have should have been mad then. That was his final season, and he got a. Katy Perry ruined Trevor Knight. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably not too unhappy with her now, being the head coach at Tennessee. But back then, he should have been upset. <laughs> I, that's the one thing that I guess I would caution both ways. I mean, if he looks terrible, and Oklahoma's offense can't get a first down, I, that, I don't know that that spells doom for next year. In the same token, if he goes out... Completes like 75% hard, for yeah. 350 and four touchdowns. It's hard to answer that Let's question. Let's not give him the Heisman. Yeah. It's hard. It's one game. It's a. It's hard to get excited about these bowl games because of opt-outs and all that stuff. I just don't I'm think just it, in, That's where our – like the question yesterday, what's the level of interest? That's what I'm interested in is, is Jackson Arnold. I, I don't think it really – stats-wise isn't what I guess I'm most excited to see. I just want to see how he handles it. Yeah. How does he handle running the team? How does the team respond to him? I mean, as if you listen to him, it's like he's the second coming of Joe Montana. If you listen to you know what he does in practice and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff from the, from his peers, yeah, there's a lot of talk. Oh yeah, around him, yeah. So we'll see, but I, I think you'll. It's one of those things that it's hard to explain what you're wanting to see, but you'll know it when you see it. Yeah, it's more of an intangible look and it's more of how he's handling himself he's more of how the team is responding to him as opposed to he went 20 of 25 for 350 you know Mm -hmm. i do think it would be interesting to see a deep ball be overthrown because there's actually that possibility now that there was hasn't been for the last two years we saw it at uh, byu as a matter of fact when yeah so that'll be yeah. maybe more Brennan Tom. Maybe we can actually get to see Brennan Thompson play. Because I don't know if you can overthrow that guy. That's true. <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it, 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 it's going to be an interesting look. Overall, another reason you like bowl games. I haven't given you any reason to like bowl games, but I'm more pessimistic about them nowadays. But – I want to see, like, okay, get excited about it. Not only just him, right? We're we're already excited about him. No, no, I'm I'm ready for. I want to see PJ Adebowari out saying. there the whole time. That's I want to see saying. Peyton Bowen out there I the whole see, time. I want to see. I want to see. Go. I can get excited about you next year. I want to mm-hmm. see. Oh, you did a play. Oh, I want to. I can't wait to see that in Norman next year. You know that stuff. Those guys. Those three guys are the three that were the the gems of the recruiting class from a year ago. And they're the guys that everybody – you see. You saw flashes of Peyton Bowen. You saw flashes of PJ. Very little of Jackson Arnold. But the one time he was called upon to win a game, he did, even if he wasn't spectacular doing it. But, yeah, that, that's the part that gets you excited. Whether or not it matters for next fall or not, nobody cares tonight at least because it'll it, it tied you into spring ball. And then the spring game tied you into – Next fall and camp and, you know, obviously then the season starts. And then, you know, I think I think the bowl, the bowl game, especially these ones, that, the, the ones that aren't the New Year's Six or aren't the, the playoff, it's almost like an early spring game. The only difference is you're playing somebody else. 
instead of just scrimmage. Yeah. You know, because that's what you're going to – with the opt-outs, with the transfer portal, with the draft, the guys that you were excited about in the fall that their time never came to fruition as youngsters, now you might get a chance to see more of. So, you know, you've got that spectrum, which is where OU's at, and then on the opposite end, it's kind of where OSU was last night. It's the same dudes that played, and it's going to be the same dudes that play next year. And this is cool. Mm-hmm. You know, but there, there's both there's reason to get excited for both of those. One actually has some standing because they've done things. The other is just potential, that P word, that gets yeah. people excited and losing their minds and, quite frankly, causes people to get, to get mad because the potential doesn't get realized. Oh, yeah. And what I hate about bowl games is – they're kind of – it's a shallow feeling to win them nowadays. It's like, okay, you, By know, the way, you won that one against two, you know. By the way, this isn't just because I hate mayonnaise. Oh, that's <laughs> – But don't they have this backwards? Why? Shouldn't Mac Brown had to get the mayonnaise poured on his head? Because he lost. Because he lost? Don't we have this backwards? Yeah, I don't see any – why is the Duke mayonnaise going on top of Neil Brown's head? That doesn't he seem, won. That doesn't seem fun for me. Good gosh, no! I, when when they showed, you know, coming back from a break, and they showed like the history of it, and watch it, I was about to throw up. Oh, it's the just pictures. thinking about how scroll, awful and yeah. disgusting that would be. Yeah, I scroll by the pictures. It's gross. Like even some still shots of it. It's uh, just the thought of being doused in mayonnaise is disgusting. I like mayonnaise, but I'm not enough Ugh. to get dumped on me. No, thank you. I coolest, just, by the way, coolest trophy in bowl season has to be the Pop Tart Bowl trophy. Have you seen that one? Yes, I have. <laughs> it's got two slots for Pop Tarts. Does it work? I want to know if it actually works. Can they plug it in and toast Pop Tarts in that bad Here, boy? So, isn't that the Cheez Its Bowl from last year? They renamed it? Yeah. So, is, you know, last year the big rage because Oklahoma was there. Was getting dumped with no no getting to stay in the room. Oh, that's right. Wasn't it Turk the punter that got to stay in the Cheez It room? I think so. Is there a Pop Tart room? I don't know. I, as much as I love Cheez Its, I think I'd rather stay in the Pop Tart room. Oh yeah, I love the Cheez Its room. I love Pop Tarts. Yeah, and I do like Cheez Its, but I do like Pop Tarts. I don't eat Pop Tarts. I heard the name change. Like, this is stupid. But then I saw the trophy. Yeah, the trophy's sweet. But that is pretty cool. Yeah, can you just pop would, a couple I of tarts hope in? You can just plug it in and toast some pop tarts in that trophy that'd be pretty cool best pop tart uh s'mores s'mores frosty strawberry here we have a wonderful thursday you've been listening to the skinny on sports podcast with aaron cow be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available thanks for listening that ball is